part of what I'm trying to do here is let you know about a project that we are developing and to really hear from you to help us frame sort of how the, the concept and how we approach the concept overall. Um, I've learned a tremendous amount in the last two days and it's been um, wonderful to be here, so I, I really appreciate um, the experience um, and, and the amazing host hosting of, of all of us, but of me as well. Um, I direct all of the evaluation activities for the Fogarty International Center at NIH. So we've been involved in this project since the beginning. I'm new to sort of thinking about it. Um, and I'm also the project lead um, on several projects uh, under a new center that we have at Fogarty. It's called the Center for Global Health Studies. And part of what that center does is um, projects like what this one will be that are sort of two-pronged, really looking retrospectively at an area or a program and then sort of trying to, to build upon the retrospective view to do some visioning for the future. So um, I don't have slides. I really was conceptualizing this session um, as a way and an opportunity for me to hear from you because you know uh, much more than we do. Um, and I think we would view this project as a collaboration with you um, and not something that, we're, that we would want to impose. So I think we are at a very formative stage. We have a concept, um, and I'll explain what our concept is, but we haven't refined it. So we would be looking for you for input um, into sort of how we bring this together. Um, so just let me tell you a little bit about what we're thinking. Um, and again, really open to your suggestions if you, if you have them. Um, so given that HAPP is celebrating its 10th year, um, we thought that it, would, it could be useful to, to, to build on the annual evaluations and not replicate them, but to take a bit of a, a, a bigger picture view of the accomplishments of HAPP over the, over the past 10 years, and to really think about um, successes, what the, the key challenges were, um, and then to sort of take that retrospective view um, and use it to think a little bit about the future. So the conversation you just had really is that, I think, um, in many ways. Um, um, and really um, to think about in, in the, in the forward-looking view, the changing landscape and what opportunities that presents. Um, and I think ultimately um, the question we would think would be useful to hear from you about um, over the course of the project would be, in 10 years, what, what are your hopes for your journal and for the project as a whole? So what would success look like? Um, so I had developed several questions that I thought I would lead the discussion with. I think um, it may not be the most useful thing for me to go through the questions that I had framed, but um, because I think you covered some of them. So I'm going to sort of facilitate some of the discussion, but it's not sort of the, the, the broadest um, scope of questions as I had planned, because I think some of that will, was covered and will be covered in the next session. But um, And then I'll talk at the very end about sort of what I plan to do and what you'll see from us, because um, I think what I will do is you know, digest and feedback to you for your input post-meeting. Um, but my first question that I was going to ask were, was um, what the greatest opportunity um, is sort of moving forward. Um, and I'm wondering if anyone has any thoughts. So you framed sort of the, the, the biggest challenges or critical issues for the journals here. Um, and they sort of present, in my mind, one could think these are the greatest areas for opportunity moving forward. I'm wondering if people agree with that. Um, and is this list comprehensive, or would it, would it make sense to sort of think through this more thoroughly, either now or at another time? Any thoughts? James, do you have thoughts? <laughs> so let's dig in a little bit more. I guess the second question, I, I have heard a lot about sustainability over the last several days. 
Um, and I think looking forward, if one were to think of a, a, a longer term view of the project and of, of your journal specifically, and dissemination of research in Africa more generally, um, what do you think um, we can do to ensure sustainable capacity? Are there really practical steps that, that you could take to sort of build sustainability into your, into your endeavors? Um, does anyone have thoughts on that? Um, to me, sustainability is um, an issue not just of bringing publications out in the future, but of um, curating what's already been published. And uh, it's one of the reasons why I've been so impressed by um, David's efforts um, scanning and archiving the Ghana Medical Journal and making that available. Um, because a lot of publishing is not just um, getting a submission and then bringing it to press. It's also then dealing with the debate which follows that publication. Uh, it's dealing with uh, you know, providing a forum for that. It's also, in, in certain cases, to do with quality control and looking at expressions of concern and retractions um, and also looking after that body of knowledge, making sure that that resource is available, um, most likely these days, digitally uh, for the future. And I think that uh, as AJPP uh, moves on into the, to the future, that role with uh, preserving and curating uh, what's been published uh, is also just something to bear in mind. For me, uh, sustainability uh, of the uh, AJPP journals is uh, giving a solution what uh, James has discussed earlier. So those points, addressing those issues, uh, uh, will will keep the journals uh, sustainable. That, that, that's how I feel. Uh, the uh, funding issues, the human resource, uh, accessibility, and so on. Uh, if, if we uh, address them, uh, the AJPP journals will uh, uh, remain sustainable. There's. Um a couple things. One is uh, the sustainability issue from where, for where we are as AJPP uh, journals. The other is how we got here. And could we have gotten here more efficiently? Uh, so I'm kind of confusing things, one, sustainability from now on, and then retrospectively looking back and said, okay, this is the way we did it in the last 10 years. Uh, would there have been a better way to do it? And it's a very important question to ask, not second-guess yourself, but we will be bringing, I mean, we hope to grow AJPP. We've grown it by two more this year, and, and uh, once we get into the uh, Chuoza's uh, talk, we'll, uh, we'll be looking at further expansion. So we've gotten here by the route we've gone, but we will be expanding to double, triple uh, the number of journals. How can, how can we get those journals up to where you currently are faster and more efficiently? So there's, there's two things, the sustainability of where we are. One of the ways, I think, is making sure that the value to the organizations from which your journals are established is recognized and then retrospectively looking back and saying, okay, where do we change, what do we change for the new journal? Um, I, this has come up also, but it, this sort of leads me to think a little bit about mentorship um, and whether there are things we could learn about how the sort of older journals could mentor the new ones coming in. And again, this has been raised, but is there a way to sort of more systematically think about how to do that well? And if, and if HAPP were to grow and sort of bring newer journals into the fold, are there things that we know work versus not? And I think that fundamentally, um, it might be useful to talk a little bit about um, what what needs to happen to, to mentor a, a, a newer journal? Are there things, are ideas, do people have ideas about how to do that well um, from experience? Or is it 
or thinking about the future what you would what would have helped you coming into this project i am just thinking to what extent do we get feedback from our party when we meet because the african journals are always reporting on what their, their challenges are what their successes are and apart from the first few years of the partnership where there was active interaction between the African journals and their partners, I am not so sure whether we have reached a peak. So there is nothing much to add. Or there are observations that because we don't actively, uh, we are not getting from that perspective. I, I'm not so sure, but this is what my good friend here mentioned. Asking you to so you mean from your partner journals yes, getting from real you, yes, from, yes, from feedback. our partners yes. and then the other part, our partners in total, how they, they see this and how have, have they benefited from this kind of relationship. Interesting. That might be a really useful question to ask in this project, to sort of get a more holistic view. Uh, uh, this is a real good part. I, I, can you hear me? Please? I can hear you. Okay. Uh, this is one of the reasons why we have looked for the, these new journals and we turned it into a three-way partnership. The journals who are now in the three-way partnership, uh, Siaka Sidibe with the, the Mali Medical and with the Ghana Medical Journal and David, they have been through the process. They know the pluses and minuses, uh, the limitations that occurred with their international journal partners. Some of the international journal partners have been very active, and some have not been as active. But mentoring, which now they enter into, becomes an important step for them. So uh, one of my questions, when you brought up uh, the issue uh, before this was uh, for David, uh, for example, uh, since I can't ask uh, Siaka uh, now, but uh, uh, for David, with your new partner, what kind of interactions do you envision and how would you begin that, that process? Uh, realizing that uh, the AJTP will support financially uh, any of the travel or whatever organization I think um, now will uh, probably agree with me is that we meet some sometime between now and when we leave on Sunday, we meet and start the discussion from that point and keep it a three-way discussion. Because so far we have not actually talked about your needs and things like that. Oh. Or even like the feedback we had on the on the internet uh, or about our website, so that kind of thing where we share and bounce ideas off each other and say that okay, you know, I think that um, perhaps uh, your your margins are too wide or uh, you, you know something practical like that. I think um, from journal to journal, part of the partnership, I think is a very useful. Um, thing to do. So I think that that's one way. Uh, and that's something I don't think we have done so much of. And I think that would be something that would be quite useful for us to do uh, maybe when we meet next time. Or something. Um, and I'm sort of thinking about sustainability, but also the, the reach of your dissemination. You guys have, have raised the issue of print versus um, electronic dissemination and, and, and the need for print to get sort of out to the, to the less well-resourced areas. I'm interested, David, you, you sort of outlined a vision for the future. Uh, Julia had asked you in your interview what you would view as success, and you talked a little bit about your journal being a platform for disseminating 
information beyond sort of academia and that that audience. Um, so I was wondering if if that resonates with anyone, and maybe David, you could explain what you what how how you articulated it. But sort of thinking about dissemination more broadly, um, are there audiences that um, that you aspire to to reach that you don't? Are there audiences that you do reach that are sort of not just from your academic institutions or from that sort of um, population? Do you want to just say what? Do you mind articulating your idea? Okay. To have their materials printed, and we then make sure that it appears in a form that will be recognized. Uh, the extent to which this is used, particularly in the country of the Jena, we are not so sure. Of. And one of my dreams is to have the Ghana Medical Journal not only being a means for people to publish their scientific working but also provide a service for the general community in providing information and things that uh, they can use. And as we go along, new technologies are becoming available. <clears throat> we have repeatedly talked about uh, having what you call it, media involvement in this. I think uh, you're now using uh, someone to write uh, a community version, for lack of a better word, of some of the key articles that you publish. So that goes beyond just serving the academic community, but making it available to everybody with an ultimate aim of improving health. That's the way I see the future. Yeah, um, that's the idea I was mentioning yesterday about BB African Health Sciences. Our idea is to focus on particular professionals, health professionals that are usually neglected. And in my country, the midwives are number one. Because training of midwives was abolished. We had comprehensive nurses. And as a result, maternal mortality rocketed. Now the country wants to start training and supporting midwives. So we would like to take a material from our journal that is relevant for midwives, package it, and then target the midwives to read it. That we think that's a service very much like David is wanting to do. So, so James, if you wouldn't mind me borrowing, um, I'm envisioning uh, AJPP babies with eight heads. <laughs> and so many countries uh, need to educate midwives or clinical workers or other, other types of, of health professionals. Or maybe there's a, a reason to have uh, the latest information on uh, tuberculosis or HIV or malaria. So again, if we're able to have this uh, powerful uh, metadata-driven uh, site that could uh, drive people, we might be able to do more with the topical collections as well. I think this is... Uh, perhaps the beginning of a really interesting discussion that we'd like to have with you and learn from you. Um, and I think, I guess I don't have a really structured sort of next steps from our side, except to say that um, we hope to really engage you along the way. Um, and we need to sort of come up with a, with a concept and think about um, if we were to sort of construct and illustrate a vision for the future, what would that look like? Um, and I think how we use that is also another key question to, to interact with you about. But for now, I think um, along with what I've heard over the course of the last two days and sort of some of the answers to, to the questions I've posed here, as well as um, what you articulated in your interviews, I think we could, I can take that back um, and digest a bit and then come back to you and sort of think about the project with, with all of the pieces from, from sort of soup to nuts laid out in a proposed way that um, we, we would invite your uh, feedback on. So thank you.
All right, thank you, Rachel. Um, a good discussion. I think it also has a lot to do with, you know, we're not individual journals. That's an important thing. AJPP is a group. It's a project in itself. So the more we can think about ourselves as a group, we all want to belong, we all want to uh, help each other along. I think that's an important thing to do. And looking forward, uh, AJPP, I think, should be a force in itself. You know, jokingly said, uh, and that said, uh, African Journal Power Project, uh, there's a lot to be said by the power of groups working together. And, I, and as I say, with the continuing support of National Library of Medicine and the Fogarty Center, uh, I think we can move forward. And in uh, and Chuoza will be doing this. Uh, we'll take a break now. But when we come back, we'll be talking about uh, how we move forward, and one of which will be dealing with what do we put in our new proposal. Uh, okay, so we can take a 15-minute break, and we'll just come back about quarter after.